The current treatment options for Pseudomonas aeruginosa are pretty straightforward. They're the drugs that we've had for quite some time now. Uh, when we talk about them, we're talking about anti-pseudomonal penicillins, piperacillin tazobactam being the key one there in the United States. We have extended spectrum cephalosporin, cefepime being the drug that's most commonly used in the U.S. I mean, glycosides still play a very important role, whether they're administered IV, usually in combination with these other drugs, in order to provide a broader initial coverage. We can also administer them as an aerosol in specific cases when we're dealing with pseudomonas in the lung. And then we have the carbapenems, carbapenems being the more recent class, if you will. Um, but even within the carbapenem class, along with the others, we've seen escalating resistance over time. And therefore, we have newer drugs that are available to us and the three new antibiotics that we have that do provide coverage for pseudomonas in varying degrees and for varying resistance profiles are going to be, um, for example, ceftalazone, tazobactam. You know, we also have ceftazidine, maybe bactam, and we have meropenem, Weber bactam. So those are three new drugs that also will help to provide coverage for lesser or greater degrees within pseudomonas.